and a bro fist to you all! Just like the sweetest things in the world, drama time has descended upon the world once again to finish out your week, to finish out whatever wonderful or horrific week you've had. We're here to have some smiles, have some fun, and do some wonderful things because it has been an awesome week. We started a project. Can you play Path of Exile? You know that game. That game that's full of infinite amounts of guides, infinite amount of builds, a literal tome of knowledge that you must prepare for. Many people saying you struggle to even do the first zone without doing at least a little bit of research into what you're going to do. Can you play that game entirely blind? What if you just went and bought it? What if you just went and bought it and stuck it on and thought, let's go. And that's what we've been doing. The completely blind project of Path of Exile this week. And it has been extraordinary. We have not hit the wall. We have not hit the wall a single time yet. It felt close a couple of times. But we've gone in. We've done well. We're smashing things. And in tribute to all my World of Warcraft fans out there, we have gone pure DPS as much as we possibly can. <laughs> we haven't finished yet, though. The wall may approach. Many predicting it is soon to hit, where we will, in fact, come unstuck with our scuff builds and our guessing what might sound good. All that kind of thing. Wall soon TM, I think, is an appropriate phrase to put with it. But along with that, we also had an announcement this week. I've been teasing you that we're going to do something in September because we can't have PreachCon. It has been two years since the last PreachCon, since I got to spend my time with you guys, even for just four or five days of chilling, drinking, and having fun uh, with all you guys here in Manchester. And we will be having it next year. It will happen. Uh, it will be happening. But to make up for that, we decided to do something a little special. Because I like doing things a little special, so we're going to do it in September. In fact, it's going to begin Monday, September 6th is going to happen. And this is what's going to happen. We're going to have a subathon. If you've not seen these on Twitch before, it's pretty simple. The stream will start with a timer and then subs and things like that will extend that timer. Now, we have guys flying over, traveling over to here to be at the office to do things because the team has been hard at work putting together a series of events, activities, and things against me that I do not know about. I have ideas of what they're doing because I see conversations happening. I see phone calls happening. But they have all these things planned for what can happen. Now, if we want to give something back in the most horrific way, COVID was kind of good to us because people were at home and they were watching Twitch and doing all that kind of stuff. So I feel a little guilty about that, I'll be honest. <laughs> so we're going to do what we can. Which means that 30% of everything we earn over our subathon will go to charity and it will go to a couple of charities that we've been researching that will provide presents and things for kids at Christmas for parents who cannot provide anything because they lost their jobs due to COVID. It's as simple as that. So we want to provide for that. I like celebrating Christmas with my kids. So we're going to do something like that. Our goal though, we have a reasonable idea that if we can make it a week, it's a week of non-stop live things happening, all kinds of stuff. If we make it a week, we're going to bump that up to 40% because that's the that's what we can do uh, and provide something for those children. So that's what we're going to try and make happen. It will be on Monday the 6th is when it will start. Fingers crossed, guys. <laughs> Fingers crossed it goes well. Uh, we've been practicing and sorting things out. I had the idea back in January, so I think it's going to be pretty cool. We'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. It could be a complete mess, but whatever it'll be, we'll have fun with it. We will have fun with it. One week, no sleep. I will be sleeping at some point, but we have things that you guys can do during that time. <laughs> uh, Chris and Nops and Bex have been masterminding this, and Emma has been organizing as much as she possibly can in order to make it a fun thing. Uh, I will be asleep on stream. Yes, we will have to pick up a bed. We'll have to go and get one, so maybe you guys can even choose what I will be sleeping in. <laughs> well i know there are things uh some things i've seen talked about are the wheel of death uh the guys have come up with uh, along with i don't know chris if you are interested in any teasers of what might be happening uh chris has uh revealed some things on stream earlier today while i was not in the room just to let people know i will have a more formal announcement on uh youtube as well so we'll probably get a video put together where i don't know what's in it kind of thing uh a hammock i can't put a hammock in the office man <laughs> I can't put a hammock in the office. Yeah, so no spoilers. Uh, some of you guys already know some of the things Chris has mentioned, but uh, there's a lot more. From what I've told, there's a lot more, but Emma is, like, coordinating it and booking it and making sure we can stream in places and things like that. So there's a hell of a lot. Should be good. <laughs> Should be good. But that's not why you're here right now. You're here to hear some goofy stories of people in the online world being absolute maniacs. Uh, so let's do that. So Wonderful Bex has provided us with some tales. 
I have uh, been streaming all day, and I am more than ready to kick back and have some stories. And she has one here called Yo Go Chaya, which I assume has RP in it. Anytime I see uh, Goldshire mentioned, sadly, it is all I can think of is that there is definitely some RP involved. Uh, so we have two names. Blake, which sounds like an RP name. Blake. Big tough, and Pat. Oh, dear. <laughs> Blake and Pat uh, are going to be our heroes for the day. Heroes for the day. So let's kick back. Let's relax. We've had a massive week. Let's have some fun. Hello, Preacher. And again, and you're wonderful to your questionable slash honorable chat. You guys are questionable, maybe honorable. 50-50 split. I'm just joking. You guys are awesome. Smile. You guys are getting buttered up. I f yeah, I feel the guilty hammer is swinging already. First of all, I want to thank you for insight into my problem describing the story of Yo Nightbane. Oh, it's a returning author. It helped me find a, uh, find a way to how I will eventually deal with that situation. Hey, no problem. That's what we're here for. The Drama Time audience is here to provide a safety net for all you guys. Anyways, I've noticed that the chat complained that this wasn't dramatic enough. And after this story is now released for about a week on YouTube and I haven't been sent a message from one of my guildies, I think it's safe that I share something more personal. Okay. <laughs> I mean, this is on you, right? You, you understand that. This is not my fault, right? You, just as long as we're ultimately clear that this is not my problem. <laughs> And oh boy, do I have some juicy ones for you. But one after another. Again, I will try to write them in my best English, not knowing what a verb is. I do remember you. As you may remember, I re-rolled to the Alliance after I came to the realization that my fellow PvP RP companies under the red banner were a bunch of dickheads, as you so accurately described them. Thank you. I'm articulate. This time I created a human rogue. Again, female, of course, on a PvE RP realm. Uh-huh. It was there I found an even more wretched hive of scum and villainy than the Moss Isley. So dark, not even the Legion nor the forces of death itself would dare to even get into this, this location. It was the Lion's Pride Inn in Goldshire. I liked the roleplay part of my PvP RP server. And I occasionally encountered some ERP there, but never, and I want to stress this, never took part in any. One day I was adventuring with my Blood Elf Rogue in Tirisfal and stealth there on an island in the middle of a lake when I witnessed some sort of sacrificing ritual that turned south very quickly. That style of RP shall not be the, my cup of tea ever. But Goldshire though. Goldshire was a whole different thing. I later found out that on every roleplay server this place had the same reputation and I swear to everything that is holy. That I wouldn't even consider entering that in on my female character. Even finishing the quest of Elwyn was unpleasant because it seemed like every female creature there was greeted with some dubious offers. And or was offered and generally treated like a whore. <laughs> even the horses at the entrance seemed to be part of that shit sometimes, depending on who you bumped into. Ew. Whoa. Mm. Oh, that's grim. The, that's not the horses can't even leave <sighs> you want to know the reason why i really dislike erp it's this place the true den of darkness the lion's pride in there is no place on azeroth or beyond that even comes close at the time i was studying math physics and chemistry to teach them i was already old enough to be certain that these females there could never be females in real life there was no woman in existence who would hang out with a bunch of men in a video game and write these despicable things. I mean, <laughs> there is. Oh, you, you, you poor naive child. <laughs> there absolutely is. Oh, you might think that women fart and potpourri and perfume comes out of there, right? That's what you think happens. You haven't got a fucking clue, dude. You haven't got a fucking clue. <laughs> oh of course you know you know uh, women women are such fantastic floating creatures you know they, they literally bring sunshine wherever they go and they would never be rude they would never do despicable acts none of that mm. this was a place i'm sure of men who just jacked off to each other in belief that the counterpart was a girl 
because who would play a female character as a dude, right? <laughs> this was the time I was rushing to level 80. Uh, and back then, I bought my game time via game cards. One day, my cousin and very close friend Blake visited us and saw a, the box of this game time card at my computer desk. He was wondering what game I was playing, and I, glad that my older cousin was interested in one of my hobbies, showed him the game and explained the basics. Well, I prepared some coffee and cake in the kitchen and chatted a little bit with his girlfriend, a nice girl two years younger than me. I would let him create a character just so he could get a feel for the game. This was, of course, an absolutely terrible, terrible mistake. Of course, he created a hunky, manly, male human and just stumbled across the starting zone, giving not one single fuck about quest objectives, dying to bandits. Because it was still my account, he created his character on the same realm that my character was on. As a human, you will encounter Goldshire sooner or later, and there's no way around it if you don't know how to get to another starting zone. He was a noob, so how could he know? But it was a nice visit, and after a little bit of chatting, they left, but I have to admit... That he and his girlfriend seem to have a little problem with drugs. What? Where are we going? <laughs> Nothing too serious, but I could tell. What kind of drugs? What does that mean? Oh, that raises... That opens so many doors. What kind of drugs? Were they wired? Were they stoned? They were probably stoned, right? I imagine if people have... Stoners are visiting someone, they're always having a spliff before they come in the house. Every single time. You know it. They're in the car. They're going to have a spliff. Then they're going to come inside. A hundred percent. My spouse, who already had become my fiance at this time, came back from work in the evening and we just chilled and we played some games. This evening, I received a text on my phone. Beep beep. Hey, mate. What server were we playing on? I told him the server. All right, mate. Thanks. Hm. Thinking not much about it, I continued to level my rogue. The next evening, another message came in. I made a new character... Called it Blake. Oh, cool. Are you playing now? Not yet, but tonight, mate. Tonight I'm going to play. Oh, I'll add you then. If you need help, just give me a holler and I'll do what I can. It was nearly 11 p.m. and he came online and I was able to add him. He didn't write much and I was not thinking anything about it, minding my own business and still was leveling as fast as I could back to level 80. The next days, I never saw him online before 8 p.m. And I was wondering why he still had yet to reach level 10. He and his girlfriend hadn't moved in together yet, but she often stayed there until the evening and had to leave around about 8pm to get the bus back home to go to work the next day. So after that, he would have all the time in the world to do whatever the hell he wanted to do, including whatever weird shit the Lion's Pride Inn was capable of providing him. I went out of my way and entered this cursed inn with my female main, and there at the table was Blake, with a dancing space goat in front of him, and a female night elf kneeling between his legs. <laughs> what are you guys doing? What's going on? Why is someone paying $15 a month to give pixelated blowjobs? Who's doing that? What are you, <laughs> what are you doing? But don't tell me. Wow token. <laughs> don't tell me it's wow token. You don't pay my sub. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> I sent him a message saying, what are you doing? But calm as a cucumber, as if nothing strange was going on, he just said, I like it in here. <laughs> I mean, well, there it is. Needless to say, I was in shock and furious that my, my cousin would be doing this in a video game. The horrible part is that I knew that what he was doing in real life, and I didn't even want to think about it. He'd sat in my computer chair. This can't be right. It's like someone asks you, like, don't think about a pink elephant, but... Now, I knew why he never played Pastel in Forest or logged in before 8pm, and it just really was fucking disturbing, man. It's disturbing. He's waiting till his girlfriend goes home to get space goat dances. When he was online and now occasionally decided to visit Goldshire and the character's doing pleasure to him. <laughs> doing pleasure to him. <laughs> and on occasion they would get far more numerous the next time he visited us in real life again i just asked him face to face why why you've got a girlfriend i like it he responded 
He pointed out that this is cheaper than erotic magazines. You have the internet, dude. Your cousin still buys magazines. So you've essentially exposed him. You know what? You know what's really sad? Your cousin thinks this is what online porn is. Doesn't he? He hasn't got a fucking Scooby-Doo. What's out there? This is actually a good deal, if you think about it. This is kind of a good thing. Because he's in a safe space, really. He's not found the weird things yet. And there is no way his girlfriend would find out that he was doing this stuff. <laughs> but how are you convincing these people to join in with you? With money. Of course, his girlfriend knew nothing about it. And I knew that it should stay this way. He had spent hundreds of gold per evening. He was online. Thousands in total. To have virtual sex with other guys, pretty much. Probably half his age. And I told him that that's what was going on. But he was pretty convinced that some of them were actual girls. Because in his mind, oh, why would a guy pretend to be a girl to blow a guy? Oh, you. Oh, oh, come here. Oh, that's really cute, right? <laughs> that's pretty cute. He's got innocence about him. He's got his little erotic magazine. Cindy likes it when she votes. <laughs> and he's got his little thing. <laughs> but he'd been buying gold. And he crossed the line. And I swore. I swore that I would destroy him. So hard he would delete his account. Why? Why? What's it got to do with you? What? What's it got to do with you? Leave him alone, man. What the hell? <laughs> Don't tell me he's ruining your immersion. <laughs> I still loved him as a cousin. But he needed to learn a lesson. Does he? Does he though? No way I would tolerate one of these disgusting guys being in my family and my game at the same time. Well, get you, eh? Get you. But how would I destroy a level 8 human on a PvE realm? On my old PvP realm, I would have logged onto my max level rogue and ganked him until he couldn't play anymore. No matter how many times the guards would have killed me. And I would have loved to imagine his face when a female blood elf was constantly killing him over and over again. At some point, I even considered transferring my old rogue to my new server just to gank him whenever I could. But that wouldn't work because of the PvP flagging on the realm. So I came up with a more sinister plan. I would become a whore myself. Are you projecting? You're jealous, aren't you? That's why you asked him how he was getting them to do it. You're jealous. Oh, no. Oh, dear. You wish those space goats would dance for you, don't you? Yeah, you do. <coughs> yeah, you do. <laughs> well, kind of. There was no way I would work there in the usual way since I could run into a situation where my cousin would definitely demand things of me I wouldn't even write to complete strangers in the game, let alone to my own cousin. <laughs> You're putting yourself in this position. I love that you're now worried about the results of a situation you're putting yourself in. Right, I have to interject into here. <laughs> and it's now really uncomfortable even though I've put myself here. Even thinking about my cousin writing those things to me or me answering in these ways made me sick. So don't do it, right? I've solved it for you. Leave him alone. <laughs> Let's just stop. No, there, must have, there was a much better way. Back then, Midrath and the Lich King, the GMs were still human and the automated answering bots were underpaid and burnt out staff. You could get in contact with them and they were a bunch of nice guys with humor and all, sometimes even ending a conversation with a joke. Oh, you're innocent as well, yeah. You remember that I didn't want to ride the LSD chicken mount with my Blood Elf and would walk by foot until I was able to mount and ride a Kodo. I do remember. Yes, leveling could wait. There was a more important thing to do. The release of Trial of the Crusader was still a couple of weeks away and I would still be able to reach level 80 when it hits the server, even if I would again take a personal and rational, absolute unreasonable quest to do so. This just seems to be my kind of thing. After visiting the inn a couple of times the last two weeks to take a look at my cousin Blake, he was just watching. <laughs> he's jerking it in the corner while he's having fun. 
<laughs> You're just watching. Ooh. So naughty. <laughs> Look at him. This is gross. Ugh. I'll be back tomorrow. <laughs> I can't watch this. It's disgusting. I'll be here again next week. <sighs> <laughs> I've been visiting the inn a couple of times the last couple of weeks to look at my cousin Blake. People started to notice me. No longer I was leveling rogue just to finish my quest here. I was I clearly was showing up for a reason. And this I used to my advantage. <laughs> I made a notepad of all the characters Blake was clearly interacting with and how I would make them my targets. What are you doing? What are you doing? It didn't take me long to come in contact with one of them, and soon I was offered a job if I wanted it. You know, it's not advisable to do such stuff with a future main character, so I made myself a new character, the most ugly female dwarf in existence, and joined the whores. You, you showed him, right? Oh, Blake's going to be so devastated. <laughs> At some point, I talked via uh, voice and with them, and surprise, surprise... Every single one of the working girls there were all guys. Before this specific conversation started, because I knew this could happen, I changed my voice with a, a decent enough voice changer to sound like the most male person possible. I even trained to talk more manly to be sure I'd convince all of them. Are you a girl? I can't remember. They never suspected anything. Are you, now are you a girl pretending to be a guy now? To blow your cousin? I need a Venn diagram of how weird this is getting now. The guy. Okay, okay, okay. It was a guy. Okay, okay. <laughs> this was getting very weird. All right, all right. Our author is a guy. All right. I was, I was very confused with the voice changer and t trying to sound more manly uh, and all that kind of stuff. Okay. They never suspected anything. The next evenings, I was RP walking there in grey items, feeling as uncomfortable as humanly possible, and pretended to work, while in reality, I was just standing around in game and watched machinimas like Tales of the Past. The reason I created a female dwarf was, of course, because it was the least attractive option available, but I shit you not, the ERPers didn't care. Yeah, I'm surprised. I'm really surprised. Yeah, I'm genuinely surprised. <laughs> You mean the people who are you ERPing about horses five minutes ago? Those guys don't care about a female dwarf? Okay. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> I always refused them. I just pretended to be the janitor and had to clean something up. So I told them to leave me alone. And still, they would find the fact that I was mopping the floor in roleplay kind of attractive. <laughs> These are some thirsty bastards. <laughs> you know, what kind of mop is it? How's that water? Is it dirty? Is it dirty water? I mean, what else could I have done to be as undesirable as possible? You could have just not been there at all. I promise you, you would have been way less desirable if you'd just not been there at all. Uh, I'm just going to put that out there. What is wrong with these guys, I thought? What is wrong with you? <laughs> what the fuck? The crew was fine with me working on those unorthodox chores because this way they would not have more competition for Blake's or other customers' gold. And of course, every brothel needs a janitor. So this just added something to the atmosphere and immersion of the place. I guess it did. After a few days of whispering, uh, a few days and whispering all of Blake's, cus uh, not customers, but servants, I guess we could say, I had enough screenshots of conversations as proof. That this level 8 human was throwing money out of the window and some of them hinted to know it was bought with real cash. I switched to my... You reported him to the fuzz? I switched to my main and created a ticket to report Blake. Why? Can you imagine that there was a time a ticket would be replied by a GM in just a couple of hours? The blue contacted me and wanted to talk about my friend. I was fully ready to throw him under the bus, but then the GM asked me something I was not prepared for. How do you know the gold he is spending is bought? Why do you know exactly where he bought it? I had all my screenshots ready, but for a split second I thought I'd fucked up and the GM would ban me as well. 
After all, why should I report a level 8 human spending thousands of gold by paying prostitutes and investigate all of this for an unreasonably long time? It's a great question. That's a really good question. Did you guys all get that question? Why? Why would I report a level 8 human spending gold and paying some virtual prostitutes and investigate all this for an unreasonably long time? Yeah, why? Why are you doing that? <laughs> Nobody, <laughs> nothing's happening. Maybe I would want to get the whole crew banned and take over the Lion's Pride to become the new Madam of the Brothel with my own crew, they might suspect. I surely was the only one in that inn that did not take or give a single gold coin and that alone could come across as suspicious. I typed in chat the truth that I knew him in real life and he had told me about it. After a very, very long pause in which my heart felt like a sinking diamond, the GM replied, he could confirm that, yes, there is something going on and actions would be taken after looking into the account. You bastard. Turned out I didn't even need the screenshots yet. After that, I sat in a corner on the inn, and after some time, Blake disappeared. Thrown out of the game. Some of the other ladies just vanished, half of the crew was disconnected, and two days later I saw one of the girls back, at, back to work again. I logged on to my disgusting dwarf and asked, Where is everybody? What happened? The members of the crew had had a 24 hours ban. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> what they should have done is streamed it. And then they should have split all those gold coins into individual coins. And spent them. That's how you get a real ban. That's how you get it done proper. Don't half ass it. That's what I'm telling you. I felt bad. I felt bad for them because it wasn't their fault Blake had bought gold, but everyone was more or less fine with these consequences when thinking about the gold. They'd they earned and already sent through dozens of different characters to wash it clean. But in future, they would take more action. Blake, on the other hand, received a full month's ban. Within this month, I saw him again in real life and convinced him that the automated gold seller and buyer detection must have flagged his account. Marked him, and next time he would try something like this, he would receive a permanent ban within only a few hours. All these illegal sexual practices... You... <laughs> illegal? There's nothing illegal about ERPing in Goldshire Inn. I don't know if you think it is illegal. It's not. At all. It's totally fine. It's totally fine. It's way less illegal than a lot of things. All these illegal sexual practices he wrote down there in-game could also lead to investigations by the police. And he believed me. Oh, you were trying to scare him. Okay, <laughs> that makes sense. He asked me if I would want to get his remaining 20,000 gold after his ban was lifted, but I said no. I wanted no part of it. Pussy. What a pussy. <clears throat> he still thought he would find this gold on his character, but I doubted it was still even there. Even if it was still there, I was quite sure receiving this gold could get me banned as well. Some time later, his girlfriend broke up with him and he never logged back into WoW again. Now that I think about it, I could never I never could imagine why she broke up with him. It's not like she could have received any screenshots or about something weird about his sexual desires. You didn't. Oh, you didn't. You fucker. <laughs> absolute fucker why i want to see your pawn history that's what i want to see <laughs> i want to see yours am i a bitch yes yes sometimes i am am i guilty yes yes i am but i'm absolutely sure he will never buy gold or do erp again and he will spend his time and money more reasonably <laughs> I mean, the hypocrisy. Oh, my God. Oh, God, man. Oh, Jesus Christ. <sighs> the best part is, no one involved ever knew about my involvement. That way, this is a good way to teach someone a lesson. So wrong. So massively. Just so wrong. So, so wrong. Oh, God. If you ever wonder what happened to Blake, 
He met a new girl and got rid of his drug abuse. He never, to my knowledge, touched an MMO ever again. It turned out his ex-girlfriend was the one bringing drugs in. It was a good thing that I ruined that relationship. <laughs> Just another pat on the back, guys. Just another pat on the back. <laughs> I'm just saving lives. That's all I'm doing, man. I'm just saving lives. You know what I mean? I'm just... Everywhere I go, I'm just spreading good vibes. I hope you enjoyed my little story. I didn't. And this time, it was enough drama to please your chat. Have a nice day and best wishes to you and your team. Smiley face. Oh, my... <laughs> that was... That was painful. Ah. Uh... <sighs> Wash my mouth out. Oh, God. Op is a hero? Lie! There's no way. All right. Who? I want to see a smile if you think the op is a hero. Show me a smile. I want to see guilties. <laughs> Unreal. Unreal. Saying that after I've had the uh, conspiracy theories up my ass for the last 24 hours. A lot of people with a lot of time doing a lot of stuff. Very, very, very important things about other people. Uh, we didn't have Pat in that story, Bex. You might want to make a note that we reuse that name at some point. <laughs> okay. Um, the s okay, what are we doing here? The Sacrifice. Let's go for The Sacrifice. That sounds more cheery. The Sacrifice. All right. The Sacrifice. Here we go. This has got to be more cheery than that one, right? Hello, Preacher! Hello to your chat! This is going to be a cringe fiesta, but still, I'm sure, very much relatable. Oh, no. Well, I mean, from horror to cringe. Let's go that way. Um, a very much relatable story about my teenage self and how I was victorious in-game and lost everything IRL in a single raid night. Oh, God. <laughs> okay. You lost everything IRL in a single raid night. I need a short intro for this one. It's 2005. I was a big fan of Warcraft 3 at the time. Played it almost non-stop, ignoring all of the games and invitations to explore other worlds with friends, solely favoring endless possibilities of the Warcraft 3 editor. I had no internet connection at the time, and thus I couldn't join my friends in Counter-Strike or Warcraft 3 multiplayer anyway. We sometimes visited computer labs to play games on LAN. <laughs> not with Diablo 2 remastered, you not. But I never felt comfortable there. Random people, dirty hands, rubbish mice. You know the story. One summer, I was sent to the countryside to stay with my grandparents. A, a typical practice. I was allowed to take my laptop with me. Since none of my peers came that summer, I was all alone creating and playing Warcraft 3 maps and scenarios for three months. That sounds well shit. You got sent to your grandparents in the countryside on your own for three months. That sounds bobbins. Like actual trash. <laughs> Having returned to the city in late August, I was ready for something new. I felt like me playing only one game was a waste, so naturally I decided to open myself up to new possibilities and experiences. I went to a game store, confronted some random guy, not even sure he was an actual employee, and asked whether he could recommend a new computer game for me. I also explained that I was a big fan of Warcraft 3 and would love to see something like that. I felt angry that day. Like, genuinely angry. Not only did I waste countless hours creating useless Warcraft 3 maps, but I was also late to the journey ahead of me. There was a game that was the world of Warcraft. And I did not know. <laughs> oh, the world without internet. <laughs> the world pre-internet. Oh, what? <laughs> I grabbed my dad by his pockets and took him to that very store to start my adventure. He was doubtful at first, but my closing argument, Dad, when was the last time you bought me a computer game? He thought about it, and fair enough, and so it happened. I'll skip the part where I further negotiate, of course, for need of internet, monthly monetary contributions, and all the usual bump that comes with World of Warcraft where I failed to recruit my friends to play with me. They couldn't afford World of Warcraft at the time. And how I struggled as a noob in my first ever online game, because I'm sure we've all heard plenty of those. Let's go to patch 3.2 then. The Call of the Crusader. So this was happening the same time the ERP was happening. You never know. When I first joined a raiding, when I first joined a raiding guild as a holy paladin. Yeah, 
I never ever joined a guild before, mostly due to a very strict gaming schedule my parents enforced on me, and a very casual approach towards gameplay. I never felt addicted to the game, played it a couple of times a week, had short gaming sessions, which I'd do a few quests, all of which I'd carefully read and explore this giant world. As I was getting older, I was starting to get more freedom, which meant I could play games for longer, and naturally I felt the urge to explore what a competitive side of WoW had to offer. I knew about raiding, of course, I'm not an idiot, but I always felt like it required too much skill to do raids. I was never the type of guy, and I still not am, that is comfortable with hopping on board of whatever unprepared and ex- of whatever unprepared and expecting to be taught how to do things. My parents taught me that time is a very valuable currency and that not contributing to the group effort enough is basically stealing other people's time. So with that in mind, my first goal was to become a valuable asset for any guild. And only then would I be ready to apply. I geared my ass in best in slot heroics, badge and crafted gear, enchanted, socketed everything, built my character according to the guides, installed and mastered the usage of most essential healing add-ons. Only then did I open... Wow, progress. Started looking and applying to the rosters. I was very dedicated when it came to my applications. I answered every question. Was honest about my lack of raiding experience. And I lied, 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 and I lied hard about my age. You see, 3.2.0, I had reached the grand old age of 15 years old. And I was rightfully sure that raiding players would be adults and would never take a spotty teenager seriously. Plus, my voice didn't crack until I was 17. 17? Your voice didn't change till you were 17? Holy crap. Can I get an age gauge? I lost... Uh, my voice broke at 11. 11 years old. What's... Can I get an age range? I need an age range. 13, 13, 12, 13, 11. 12-ish, 11-ish, 16. 17 seems really late, right? 16, 17? Alright. That feels very late. I can't remember if anybody in my high school's voice hadn't changed by that time. Fucking awful, isn't it? Rough. <laughs> so I felt, a bit, I felt a bit ashamed of my voice. So in every application form, I said I was 19 and that I had no microphone saved. <laughs> Got him. Luckily, people didn't seem to mind, and after a week of filling those long-ass 2000s guilds application forms, I finally found myself a raid team. I don't remember the guild name, and honestly, it's not relevant. Thanks to my be-a-valuable-asset type of upbringing, I quickly became one of the better healers in the team. The raid leader made it his first priority to gear me up as soon as possible, and by the time we pulled the first boss in Trial of the Crusader 25-man, I was mostly swagged out in 232 gear. I seemed to get along just fine with people, although the officers creeped me out. You see, I come from a wealthy family, and my parents were kind of nationalistic and very arrogant towards working class people. Luckily, my school friends, which came from different national backgrounds and for the most part were kind of poor, always helped me balance my family's egotistical bullshit. Nice! But it still had a strong influence on my perception of online people when I found out my guild master was a janitor. <laughs> I can't, I can't play under a janitor. Jeeves, fetch me my new mouse. And his wife was unemployed. And actually trying to earn money farming gold in World of Warcraft. <laughs> and their two best friends who were officers were handymen or something. I felt like I would be I would degrade towards them over the years if I stay with that guild too long. <laughs> <laughs> you can't stay with the guild because your job's not good enough, IRL. <laughs> They're going to drag him down to their level, man. Oh, I've got to escape this. <laughs> my parents and I had a heated argument once when I told them about my new in-game friends. They threatened... You're wealthy with no internet. They threatened me with cutting the internet connection off if I kept playing World of Warcraft too much with the pause. World of Warcraft, the poor people game. <laughs> the pause. <laughs> they had all the right to be cautious. My grades were actually getting worse. My physical shape was degrading. I kept losing interest in IRL activities. 
But at the time, TOC 25, man, was kind of a big deal. So weeks went by and my guild kept getting closer and closer to killing a new Brakan. IRL, though, I received the lowest ever grades on most of my school disciplines and my parents banned me from playing World of Warcraft. No matter how hard I tried explaining that there are 24 other people that were relying on me as their holy paladin in the trial of the crusader to kill an ancient bug monster, they just didn't care. All my arguments fell on flat ears. The more I tried, the angrier my parents got. So I made a plan. Since my guild raided late at night, I suggested we rescheduled our raid time even later so that I could play when my parents went to sleep. Since I never used Ventrilo anyway, I doubted I would make a lot of noise. It's the reset day, 1am. My guild had wiped twice in the last phase of Anubrakan and everyone was very optimistic about the further pulls and so was I. I did my best to make as little noise as possible. I had a few close calls with my dad passing by my room to pee, but he never looked inside. Now preach. I'm not very good at it, but do try to set the mood of this right. I'm 15 years old, breaking every rule of my household, going directly against my parents' wishes, playing World of Warcraft late into the night. The next day, I'm supposed to have a calculus exam I've not prepared for, but a new Brakan is at 40%, 25 out of 25 alive. I've got good mana. My pulse is around a thousand. 30%. People in Ventrilo are st already, already talking about loot. Everyone's spirits are high, except for mine. I can hear the door to my room open. 25%. It's dad. He turns on the light, begins screaming at me with the language I never thought that person would ever use. My mother is startled. She gets out of bed and runs in and starts screaming at me playing World of Warcraft and at my dad for using that sort of language in front of me. I'm shocked. I start panicking. I actually pr accidentally press things on my keyboard that turned my mic on. 20%. My guild is silently doing mechanics. The raid leader keeps navigating the fight, but I'm in the spotlight. Not only do they hear my hysterical, high-pitched voice for the first time, they also hear some badass shouting in the background, threats to threatening to break my fucking PC in half, and tearful screams of my mother trying to calm down the situation. 10%. At this point, most of the raid loses concentration, starts laughing their asses off, and our team slowly starts to die. Even the ever-so-focused raid leader finds it hard to concentrate. We're still giving it a try, 15 people remaining. Bugs are everywhere, healer's man is low, tanks being battle res two times already, shouting and my crying doesn't stop. It gets worse because at this point my dad's attempt to pull me off the chair and literally break my stuff. I accidentally kicked him with my leg and due to adrenaline, it was quite a strong kick. My dad falls on the couch. I briefly turn around to check on him and boy, is he furious at this point. 5%! He rips my keyboard from my computer and breaks it in half. He throws me away from the computer and rips the monitor as well. All the while, he keeps insulting me about what a shitty, miserable, lying son I am. How I'm his biggest fucking failure and how he should never have bought me this shitty video game. My father never hit me, nor was he that kind of man. I was lying on the floor, crying, my keyboard and monitor destroyed, me realizing I'm never playing World of Warcraft again in a long time. He told my mum to stay with me while he was going to grab the garbage bag to throw away all my gaming things. But suddenly... I hear the screams from the headphones. Loud screams. I grabbed them and put what was left of it on. A new Brakan has died. Our guild did it. They congratulate each other. They laugh and meme about me. Some say I'm a hero. Some say my dad is. I stayed with them for exactly 10 seconds of celebration. I said thank you across the room. The raid leader says that for all my sacrifices, I am being given the plate boots that are dropped. I never got a chance to celebrate it. My dad has already returned. He ripped the headset off me, slammed it on the floor with his foot. Does the same with my mouse and what's left of my keyboard. The horrors I witnessed later are indescribable. My PC would never live again. I was banned from computer games for a very long and, and I want to be clear on this, justifiably so. Over the next few months, I fixed my school grades. I got back into shape, found peace with my parents. It took me almost a year to earn their trust again, and on my next birthday presents, 
they got me a new gaming PC. From that point forward, I learned that balancing gaming life and life is very important. And never had troubles like that again. <clears throat> I never tried contacting my former guild. I didn't even play World of Warcraft again until Mr. Pandaria. I'm sure they still remember this kill for the rest of their lives. And if they're hearing this, it was me. It was me. Thanks for listening. And cheers and sorry for my bad English. I am not a native English speaker. <sighs> Sounds like shit, parents. <sighs> Hmm. Would I ever put a computer in my kid's bedroom? I can only talk from my own experience here. That the day I got a TV, nay a computer, into my own bedroom, I barely left there again. I became restricted to 1% of the total household. I sat in that chair many days. And if I couldn't do that, I would go to my brother's house and do it there instead. I don't think I would. I don't think I would. I don't think I would even give my kids a TV in their room. Right? Until they're older. Did I have fun? I mean, I ended up here. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I had a lot of fun. <laughs> I had a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, I think I was... When did I get a TV? I would have got a TV first. Having your own computer was a... No, oh, no, no, that's not true. No, that's not true. No, I did. I had my... I did. I got a TV. I think I got a TV at probably seven or eight years old because I had a master system. Yeah. Yeah, probably. Yeah, probably about seven or eight. My kid's eight next week. Not getting a TV. <laughs> I refuse. <laughs> I refuse. <clears throat> I refuse. He's not getting a TV. I'm not giving him a TV. He doesn't need one, man. There's absolutely no need to get him a TV. None at all. Zero reason to give him a TV. I can't, I can't think of a, He doesn't even ask me for one. There's zero reason at all. What's he going to do with it? Sit in his room and watch it. Right, we need a guild name. Uh, I have no theme needed, so we could do that. <laughs> we could do that. Oh, I'm putting that in the title box. So let me copy and paste that. We need a, yeah, I need a guild name, guys. Hot guys ruin everything. True. The pause. Yeah, we'll go with the pause. I like that. We'll go with the pause. That sounds perfect. Yeah, the pause. <laughs> the guild will be the pause. We'll go with that one. <clears throat> the pause sounds perfect. All right. Dear Preacher, drama time has taught us that it only takes one person to destroy a guild. Normally, that person is a massive jerk, but let me tell you about the time my guild and my life was destroyed by one guy who was a sweet, helpful, and just too damn perfect. Oh, my God. What was his name? Is he back again? Not Ricardo. What was his name? The Pause was one of many Team Australia guilds. Gianluca. Gianluca returns. Oh, my God. It's the return of Gianluca. The Pause was one of many Team Australian guilds that formed on the Oceanic servers when they opened at the very end of Vanilla WoW. I was 19 years old and at Yacht University with my girl girlfriend Lil Theris and I joined The Pause. I was a tank, Lil was a holy priest and we brought, the most, uh, we brought most of a successful Karazhan farming team with us from our US server. The GM of The Pause was a mage named Temeth. Temeth had all the credentials of a proper GM circa 2006. She seemed to know a lot about every class. She had big goals, high standards. She designed and ran the guild website, provided the TeamSpeak server, and operated the DKP site as well. Oh, God. Raiding in 2006 sucked. She also set hearts aflutter with a picture of herself at her desk on the guild forum. In the photo, she was winking at the camera from beneath a, t a tussle of shiny blonde curls. Her nose wrinkled cutely. With a caption that said, ready to play. Nice. Lil Theris hated Temeth right away. 
But she couldn't help but respect Temes' skill and commitment to being a guild master. Temes' group was also finished with Karazhan and ready to take on bigger challenges. Our target at the time? Gruul's Lair. We had the numbers to get in, but we soon learned our healing was not capable. Molgar crushed us over and over as our tanks and DPS fell over left and right. Ever efficient, Temeth began advertising for a new healer immediately. And that's when we met Shro. Shro was a recently transferred Holy Paladin with loads of raiding experience. His application was filled with jokes and little stories that proved he knew his stuff. He was some kind of highly paid IT manager at a bank, which gave him lots of time to play. Better still, he'd already done Gruul, and he had the Justicar pants and a Bloodmaw Magus blade to prove it. Shro lifted our raid and to glory instantly. We crushed Molgar on the first pull of the next raid and beat Gruul himself the same night. Over the next few weeks, we beat Magtheridon and started chewing through SSC and Tempest Keep. This success was partly due to Shro's meter-destroying heals, but mostly it was his instinct for raid strategy and ability to deliver suggestions to Temeth without undermining her authority or being annoying. Outside of raid, Shro was always online and ready to run dungeons or heal an arena group or help farm materials. He seemed to have an infinite supply of gold and bought epic flying training for half the guild. Whenever anyone needed rare materials or a BOE, they'd ask Shro first. He usually had one in his bank. Best of all, Shro boosted the performance of the whole raiding team with fun and little training sessions he organized. I remember tanking this Shattered Hall's heroic naked while Lil and a shaman practiced keeping me alive under Shro's watchful tutelage. Seeing Shro's effort inspired everybody to push a little harder, be a little better, be more than you currently are. Time flew in his presence. He knew everyone's name, and he always had a new running joke or a story that made the evening light and fun. In retrospect, I should have noticed the danger signs. Temeth promoted Shro extremely rapidly, making, making him a full member, then healing leader, then an officer, then raid leader, all within the space of a single month. Each promotion met with a full-throated support from the whole guild. But it was a departure from Temeth's rules. Temeth. On rare occasions, Shro wasn't online. But when he wasn't online, he was all people talked about on TeamSpeak. We found a photo of him on the bank website. A tanned, buff man, about 30. No pool phone, though. <laughs> Wait, Bex, is this real? Is did this come with the story? Is this the picture that came with the story? No. Okay. 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 <laughs> you did that. Okay, Bex added this. Yeah, just in case anybody forgot, our Lord and Savior Himself, Gianluca. Praise be to the magnificence of the one and only, the raiding colossus that is Gianluca. Of course, Bex has that image saved. I'm sure of it. Bex has that image saved. <laughs> ah, every now and again, we just need a little Gianluca in, li in our lives. Several guys suddenly became interested in motorcycling when they heard he rode a Kawasaki on weekends. An argument broke out one night over who was in Shro's primary dungeon team, which ended in a warlock logging out in tears when she learned that Shro invited a hunter to a Shadow Labs run instead of her. Aww. When Shro got new work responsibilities that meant he couldn't raid on Thursdays, Temeth shifted the raid to Friday, because raiding without Shro just isn't raiding. And in raids, players, especially the female players, fell over each other to spend their DKP on items for Shro. In his defense, Shro never asked. And this, and he protested every time. Ladies, ladies, ladies. I don't need it, you know. But I'll take it. But Temeth would master loot the items directly into his bag. Over his complaints. While it was increasingly obvious the girls and one or two of the guys were competing for Shro's attention, I wasn't worried. Lil Theris seemed mercifully immune to his charms. Sure, her, oh no, you're going to lose your girlfriend to him? Oh no. Sure, her relationship with the other girls had suffered as a result of Shro's presence, but it's not like she ever called me Shro in bed or anything. Until she did. 
but she did it to wind me up and laughed it off. That's fucking hilarious. <laughs> That's fucking genius. <laughs> I'll teach you. <laughs> but the real betrayal wasn't far away. <laughs> Having beaten SSC and Tempest Keep, our raid was attuned, of course, to Mount Hyjal early. Our command was a hell of a challenge, even after Kale and Vash. But after several nights of failing to dodge fire, we got him. And there it was, the Cataclysm's Edge. I had switched from tanking to arms a couple of months before, so this was my dream sword. It was mine, and I never got it. It only dropped once in like six months of killing Archimond. Son of a bitch. It was the first on the server. My heart nearly jumped out of my chest when I saw it. I screamed nerdily into my microphone. When the celebrations from the kill died down, Temeth opened the bids. I had plenty of DKP points, and I pushed it all onto the table. But Lil Theris had more? And she dropped it right on top of mine. Your girlfriend outbid you? I whispered her immediately. What are you doing? Question mark. Tro can use that sword, she replied. Oh no. Oh, this is horrible. But he's a healer, I said. All she sent back was slash shrug. Temeth started the countdown. Wait, I said on TeamSpeak. No, 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 hang on. Three, two, one. Grats, Lil Theris, said Temeth. Where's it going? There was a pause. I did now, but I regret. I whispered her, please, baby. Oh, no. <laughs> please, baby. Oh, my God. That's gross. No. Oh, please, baby. <laughs> Shroti spoke up. Not me. I don't want it. But Lil Theris said it'll look good on you. Take it. Oh. The cooking that's happening here. Grat Shro said Tebeth cheekily, and the item was allocated. Oh, God. I was so hoping she was winding him up. I was begging and praying in my brain that she was just winding him up, and she was giving it to him with her DKP. But apparently not. <laughs> apparently not. It was like a giant red two-handed sword in my heart. As I sat there shocked, Shro whispered me. Sorry. And I said, it's not your fault. And yes, Preach, I feel like a chump. You told the guy who was definitely wow tapping your girlfriend, it's okay. <laughs> I called her immediately. <clears throat> and we had the mother of all screaming matches. To summarize, the relationship was over. <laughs> you, duh. <laughs> no shit. <laughs> I'm shocked and stunned. What? A, I'm aghast, really. But I couldn't bring myself to blame Shro. I logged back on in the wee hours, and before quitting the guild, I sent in an in-game letter thanking him for the good times. I shouldn't have left, though. I missed out on the best fireworks of all. The pause disbanded just a couple of weeks later. As you can probably imagine, Tameth had convinced Shro to come and visit her IRL. Now we're all used to girls in online games talking themselves down in the drunken, hag-ridden post-raid hours. Tameth had told us over and over how dull and unattractive she was. But we'd seen her photo on that forum and we would always say, You are so beautiful, Tameth. Shro was the king of making Tameth feel good about herself, but Tameth wasn't kidding. The photo, of course, was a complete lie. When Shro turned up, he discovered Temeth was 45 and not the lady in the photo. He left the guild and server to escape her ongoing attentions. Without him, the entire guild collapsed. What happened? What, what happened to Lil Theris? 
I never saw Shro again. And if you're out there, buddy, I still miss you. Come find me on Frostmourne one day and we'll hang out. My wife's going to love you? That's disgusting. <laughs> That's... Are you trying to get a three-way dance? A pork sword spitter? Is that what you're trying to do? You're trying to get the pepperoni and the ham on the same pizza? Are you still desperate for that Shro loving? I mean, fair enough. If that's the way you want it to go down, that's the way you want it to go down. I kind of see where you're coming from now. You want some of that big breakfast, don't you? Eggs and bacon, the whole thing. All right. Well, there it is. <laughs> there it is. Hey. There, there, there we go. <laughs> there we go. The end. Uh, Shro, if you're out there, run, motherfucker. Run for your fucking life, dude. Just go. Yeah. Just go. You remember that scene in Free Willy where the fucking whale dived over a wall over that kid? Yeah? That needs to be you right now. Okay? Just go. Get out into that open sea and just run. Run for your life because I'm pretty sure a lot of these people want to dangle the dice on your forehead. And that's going to be a whole thing. Oh, God. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that was a chaotic and roller coaster drama time and an excellent way to finish the week. But that does bring us to the end of drama time. Our souls are now just completely burnt and horrified in all ways. Well, it's been a hell of a week. Thank you, everybody. It's time for me to go spend time with my family and remember what is good and pure in this life. Hopefully, I don't run into Shro, otherwise I'm lost forever. <sighs> I'll see you soon. Hopefully, we're streaming some POE over the weekend. Uh, I'll do my best, but we'll, we'll see how it goes. Uh, my family only came about this week, so we'll see. I'm going to try. I might be streaming tomorrow, but weekend is always ropey. I don't like to say yes, because I don't know. All right. So, I'll see you all later on. Bye, guys. Oh, gotta press the right button.